Hello, you're watching the Telecom TV Summit on the Green Network. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. And joining me now is Maria Lehmer, who is co-founder of Weaver Labs, a Web3 startup that aims to democratize access to telecoms infrastructure with 5G and blockchain. Hello, Maria. It's very good to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us on the summit. Now, we know that telco infrastructure uses significant amounts of energy, you know, everywhere from the data center to the RAN cell sites throughout the network. How can the use of software help them to lower their energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions? Hello, and, and thank you for, for having me to talk today about such an interesting topic. Um, so the way that we think about how to manage better our resources in, in the telecoms industry, um, it is basically through infrastructure sharing. Um, the fact that if, if we have infrastructure that can be used and, and optimized, um, it definitely can drive down the costs of, of all of that energy that we are consuming across all of the assets that, that, that create the telecoms network. And software, it is, it, it's a, it's a tool that can actually help um drive that uh, infrastructure sharing the adoption towards infrastructure sharing uh, but also it can help us gather all of that data and monitoring information that we need uh, in order to make informed decisions on, on where do we need to act in order to be more efficient energy wise so there is th there is a lot of things that we should be doing with software um, in order to tackle that that problem of energy consumption and efficiency in energy which which comes from all the way to accessing infrastructure as a service looking at better monitoring um, drive data pipeline so that we can put more intelligent decisions into uh, power management and all of that using, you know, cloud-based and automation. And we're hearing so much on the summit already about the, the use of data and, and getting the right data, because it's got to be the right data and, and applying that, that data correctly. Now, you also talked about infrastructure sharing there, and you've spoken before about marketplace models. So can you explain to us how telcos can adopt marketplace models that that hopefully will cost effectively optimize their network usage so in, in fact a, a marketplace model it's nothing more than a supply and a demand getting together in in the same kind of platform right so the way that we we see infrastructure sharing is that it needs to be made easy and it needs to be made consumable and if we look at in the past how the cloud infrastructure actually made um, data centers into hyperscalable platforms is through the use of software that made that link precisely between who's supplying software and services for um, cloud applications and who's consuming that. And it actually helped uh, build, you know, the, this whole kind of like um, application ecosystem that that we have today and you know companies such as like AWS, Google, Microsoft have actually pioneered the way that that we consume cloud services. So in the telecoms industry we see that there is a vast available um, infrastructure that it is both underused or uh, that can be put up for um, renting if you want to call it or or access for whoever wants to consume connectivity um, the majority of the times the problem is that we don't know where that infrastructure is or we need to spend a lot of time trying to find it and and getting into agreements one by one until we actually get access to that infrastructure um, and we think that it might be more efficient if we use software tools that actually helps whoever wants to get access to infrastructure uh, to collect all of that infrastructure under one single platform. So essentially a marketplace would just be a software tool that aggregates all of that um, telecoms infrastructure that exists within a geographical area and opens it up to be discoverable for whoever wants to consume it. And, and examples of this can be, for example, neutral hosting, 
indoor connectivity, public sector deploying telecoms infrastructure for um, advanced wireless in cities, and the examples are endless. And the fact is that telecoms infrastructure is built by the same people that actually consumes infrastructure as a service in order to get you know access to excess of capacity or access to backhaul or access to small cell installations so we believe that getting all of these assets into a single marketplace can actually help um, driving down the the cost of overbuilding infrastructure in dense urban areas and also of course um, getting access to infrastructure that is underused and as well incentivize new players to to build the infrastructure and covering areas that it might not be uh, commercially beneficial for for the large operators to build in in those areas okay thanks maria uh, well, let's look at some of the, the software approaches uh, in, in a bit more detail now because we're we we're already hearing from some of the the large, you know, tier ones that that they they're using blockchain ledgers um, already to, to um, for for uh, supply chain purposes um, and 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 keep tabs on 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 the different assets and network assets. But why use blockchain, and what value does it actually contribute? So blockchain is a very powerful technology that has proven to provide a trusted environment within a trustless network. And the, the role that we think it can take in, in, this, in this marketplace is to govern um, the, the, the market rules, essentially. So it's, we believe that decentralization of this marketplace, it is the key to success because no one company should be managing this this marketplace but it should be something that it's it's being brought to the network to actually govern um the the you know the rules of it so essentially the role that blockchain takes for us it is if you want to see your your oss bss layer where what you do is you you can contribute those assets into the network and then there is a validation of who has been consuming those assets so essentially what it does the blockchain layer it gives you your smart contract tooling so that you can have an agreement between two trustless parties it can also engage with the tokenization of the asset so that later we can understand how much it has been consumed of that and of course finalize the payment between the two uh, parties that are engaging in this agreement so the tooling that we see from from the perspective of the blockchain is just to to handle the the, the resources that are being put into the network and the consuming of those resources and it would help us move from very strict contractual agreements based on slas into something that it's a lot more flexible and it can lead towards some more pay-as-you-go model um, with much more flexible way of accessing infrastructure as a service. And also we believe that uh, putting the blockchain layer in with a consensus can help maintain um, the, the, what, what the network wants to work towards and, and you know, bring also the, the other players into the consensus and, and maintain the good of the network through it. Well, this summit's all about you know how telcos are looking to to reduce their their energy usage, lower their emissions, and you know hence using software as a, as a, as a key approach here. But in your experience, are telcos equipped to use such services and, and models? And you know for those who are looking into this approach, will the cost and disruption to the current models they use offset potential savings? Well, I think they are equipped. I think as an industry, we are taking the right steps into, into that direction. Um, as, as we said at the beginning of the conversation, what we believe it is quite important to, to get into that efficiency point and, and, and being uh, more you know, ecosystem friendly in the way that, that we deliver these services is by the use of data, is by the use of automation and, and software. And we see the industry actually migrating into that and taking control and ownership over their own clouds, which it is a great first step in the right direction. Um, when, when we start working in, in you know, this, this, this world of orchestration and software tools, uh, the, the first thing that we understood is that infrastructure is not only 
um, you know, the servers where we are running our software. It goes all the way down to the power management and how can we control the, the power of all of these assets. And in and, and bringing that layer of data, it is quite important for them. And we see that through that migration towards cloud, we will enable automation tools, we will enable more intelligence, we will enable more AI-based tools that would learn and, and, and make more informed decisions into where, which areas of the network we should be optimizing with that thing in mind, which is um, energy consumption. And of course, software would definitely help us be more efficient in the way that we use the infrastructure and access the infrastructure um, as a service and on demand. So to your question, I think we are doing the right things. I think it is a complex task. The telecoms industry is delivering critical services to masses. So of course, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, but as an industry, we are doing what we have to do in order to get there. Um, and, and the thing that I think it's more, more important to, to mention and to acknowledge here is that we are doing it collectively as an industry, which I think is the key to success. Yeah, good points. And, and finally, Maria, as you said, it is a complex task, but what's, what's holding us back? Is, is there maybe too much emphasis on using so-called alternative power um, approaches? Is it the data? Is it difficulties on agreeing what metrics we should be measuring and monitoring? You know, is, is it possible to create best practices ac across the industry? What's it really going to take for a critical mass of telcos to rethink their approach to infrastructure assets and usage? Well, I think it's you know, if we grab the status quo as it is right now and we say, okay, we need to be more efficient, right? And I am a tier one operator. I have tons of infrastructure running and giving, providing services. And we say, okay, so first thing is like, where am I drawing my power from? And trying to move to renewable energies, it's definitely a good first step. Uh, because that's something that y you can do without touching your infrastructure. However, Renewable energy, so where do we draw power from is something that we have little control on. I mean, it, we depend on what is being fed towards us more than things that we can actually do to be more efficient. Then the, the next step is, okay, so let's, let's try and see how we can uh, make small changes that can help us be more efficient. And that may be, you know, adopting software that, that brings that, that data layer into um, into our networks and then put more software tools that can help us make more intelligent decisions based on that. However, uh, when, when we are working with infrastructure that it's already there, that it's providing services, it is challenging to, to make that change as if you know, we were talking about green, green, greenfield deployments where, you know, of course we, we can do everything off, uh, like we can start everything and design everything as if, as if with that in mind. However, with existing infrastructure, it's, it's something that needs to be put on top. So I believe that, you know, starting from the, the, where are we drawing the power from and then looking at how can we gather data first, then sanitize that data and convert that data into information. So when the time comes that we are ready to put all of these network automation tools and more AI driven approaches and orchestration tools that make us be more efficient, we have that data layer. The data layer needs to be created before we put the intelligence because we need data to be intelligent. So I guess that's that would be the nice um, steps that, that we can take towards using more efficiently our assets. Absolutely fascinating, Maria. And as you say, you know, the best approach to do this is to do it collectively as an industry. We must leave it there for today. Thank you so much for taking part in this year's Green Network Summit. Thank you. Thank you so much.